Hey wood turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Got a block of wood. It's just a piece of poplar about three inches thick. Got a hollowing gizmo. I got a lathe. I got a chuck and I got a little bit of time. You got some time? What say we make this thing into something? You know what you gotta do? All you gotta do, watch. I took the block of wood, took it over to my bandsaw, found the center, spun a diameter on it, cut the blocks off, got rid of it. I don't like spinning it with those big corners on it. It's a hero move. You could get hurt. So if you get a bandsaw, cut them off. At least 45 of them. Now, got that done, I want to put it on a chuck. This doesn't fit on that chuck unless I drill a hole. So I drilled an inch and a quarter. Whoop inch and three-eighths inch hole with the forcing a bit. Already? Now that's just so I can hold it to put a glue block on it. I don't, I don't want to waste any of this wood for holding it. It's only three inches thick. I need all of it. So in order to hold it, I'm going to put it on a glue block. Now to put it on a glue block, first I have to hold it. If I put that hole in it, I can open up my spigot jaws inside that hole. I can flatten this out right here. And I can put on this glue block. The glue block I got out of a box that I keep right down there on the shelf that's got glue blocks that are I've done a couple of things to them. I spun them between centers so there is a center. And then I put a, cham a chamfered or a date uh, dovetail on one end that's the right size that matches my template or is a little bit larger than my template for fitting in my number two jaws. Then I held it in the number two jaws, I flattened the face and put a depression in it. This makes it ready to be glued on. But I don't want to glue it on this, this is pretty irregular. So my first move would be to crank up the lathe and flatten that spot so I can put this block on and then on the positive I'm going to have a good hold. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to crank up the lathe at about four or five hundred RPMs. I'm going to take sharp Ellsworth and just put a little flat spot across it. See how crooked it was? It'll never touch in the center, that's not real critical. And it's got to be good and flat. So I want to take a scraper and flatten that spot a little bit. I want to get the maximum holding I can get right there. I don't want a cup to a cup or an edge to an edge. I want good flat spot. And I'm not. I'm still ri rising a little bit. So you need to take a hard look at it. Don't trust first impressions because that's when wood spins off and hurts you. Because in between centers Brought the speed a little bit so I can get a clean cut. Now that's better. I feel better with that one. I see that's a good flat finish uh, fit. To glue this, I put it on with medium thick super glue. Medium thick Starbond super glue is what I use for glue blocks. They make a gel pack, a flexible, flexible black. They make several glues for this. This just happens to be my preference. All I have to do is have a band right here, put it in place, and then bring up my tailstock. One thing, I don't want to overpress the, the tailstock and squeeze all the glue out of the fitting. I have that up. The glue block is not running as true as I like it. 
So we must let this set for a little while and then after it sets we'll true up this block and flip it around. What I'm going to do is put my tool rest here, take my my skew and retrue that dovetail so that this and this run true. While that's gluing up, I'm going to take a moment to tell you about Big Eye Productions. www.eddiecastellan.com Yeah, you see the address? That's where you need to go if you're looking for carbide cutters. But we added new products in the last couple of weeks. We added a captive ball hollower, and we're working on one more special tool. But what I really want to make a point of is, if you've got somebody else's carbide tool, I've probably got a cutter that fits it. I just added the small ones, a 10.7 millimeter square, radius square and round, and the 8.8 .8 round. Just added those to my inventory. And I've got squares, I've got radius squares, I've got triangles, 12 millimeter, 16 millimeter, 18 millimeter rounds. And I've got these little bitty diamonds, or triangles, made for the, lace, for the ornamental lace. All that at your source for carbide tools. Again, www.eddiecastellan.com. And remember, if you ever have a problem or a question, you need to have a little more details, all you got to do is call me. Here's the number. There you go. You can call me. Blue setting up. It's almost time to get back there. Before we turn this around, I have a basic idea of what I want. I want to bring the top edge down a little bit on a piece and bring the bottom edge way up. So I need to remove a whole lot of this bottom and I can do it now while it's easy and I'm on my what I call my positive side of turning. I'm over here where I've got better control over it and I can I am holding on not with a glue block but with a really good chuck and that the uh, spigot jaw. Do a couple of pull cuts just to straighten that edge out. I'm going to come up and clean up the side here so I'm not fighting getting a start every time. Otherwise, every time I go to push in, I'm going to have a little problem with it bouncing. So right now, I'm going to go across this edge. And that's my goal. It's about three quarters of the way across. Now I'm going to push down. I'm going to do some push cuts down this side to shape this up. Keep in mind that every single cut is a practice cut. When you get started, close your fluid up and then twist it to open it. Always ride that bevel. Any time you should be able to stop the machine, take a look at that surface, and figure out that that's going to be pretty good stuff. I'm not. I'm a little bit aggressive. I got a few tears here and a few tears here. That's telling me that I need to lighten up my cuts before I get to my finished dimension.
Did you hear that banging? I was beating the bevel right through here. I wasn't cutting enough edge. You get to a point where the curves look right and you've got, got it kind of knocked down your one or two. It's time to flip it around. Remember, you've got a true, very true uh, glue block right here. It should flip around very cleanly and you won't have any registration problem. As I put on my number two jaws, my profile jaws, I'm tightening down the set screw. Because there's a good chance that something happening real soon will cause me to put this bowl in reverse. Sanding, cutting, finishing, hollowing, some part of the operation. So plan on it now and I'm going to put the, the set screws in. The true beauty of this whole rig, I had a center from the Forstner bit. That's in the center. Okay, I let it find the center. That pushed it into the chuck, and now I tighten the chuck. So I am absolutely positively centered up again. And I don't want this thing to move. So I put a little bit of a cheater on it to pull it around a little bit tighter than just snug. My cheat is about a 10 inch piece of pipe. It's actually one of my handles. And my daddy always told me the reason I got three holes in chucks is to tighten all three holes. Well these have two holes so I tighten both holes just to make sure it's up and snug. I don't want something to vibrate loose or come loose and cause this piece to wobble, to wobble around. If it wobbles around I think it'll come off the glue block. If it comes off the glue block, I'm pretty sure it's going to take its vengeance out for cutting it up right in the side of my head. So I don't want it to come off the glue block. We're now running. We are absolutely positively true. This is so sweet. Brings the speed up and starts shaping up this side. And I start with taking the face off. Now remember that if it gets too aggressive, it'll tear. I want to say something about this cut. It'd be really easy right now to just do a pull cut. Okay, now, the problem with the pull cut, it's not true, it's not right, it's not flat. And it can tear the wood up a little bit. The push cut, coming off this corner, I start with a flute straight up and down. I get a little bit of a bite, then I open the flute, and I follow it. See the ribbon I'm getting? That's the first indication that I'm getting a good cut. I'm riding the bevel. which tells you that I've got a good smooth cut and I've got no tear which means my tool is sharp but I've got a quarter inch to go I've cut a whole lot of wood with this 
I'm going to the Black Hawk right now. I'm making one pass across the face and I'll come back with a brand new razor sharp edge because cutting with dull tools ain't going to get it. Life is full of little lessons. I spun this and I had my super glue on here. Some of it tracked onto here. Now while I was making a rough cut, I didn't mind it but I could feel it. But now this has got to be true and smooth because any bump I'm going to read in here is going to be on there. So to make it true and smooth we just take a little paper and we not only true up the top but we true up where it might ride, where our hands might ride. Our fingers will go. It only takes a second. With this little trick it will make your work come out a whole lot smoother. Smoother means less rough sanding. Now. I've moved my tool rest in close. I'm going to be cutting slightly above center. Again, close it up, get a little bite, and then open it. I've got my right hand way back on my tool to get good leverage. I'm watching the bevel very closely. Almost there. I still have about three sixteenths over here to fix. Again, I'm taking about a sixteenth of an inch. Actually, all my all my energy is going straight down this tool to push it to slide. I have a very, very good edge. I left a little bit of a shadow here, but I still have a sixteenth to cut. When I stopped, I left a mark there. You can't see it because of light. I added a new light recently. Now, you see the little mark out there? All right. But one more cut and we're done. Again, close bevel. Twist. Stay on it. I'm going to clean up a little bit right at the mouth of that piece. But this piece is now ready to be hollowed. And because I don't want it to be a 45 minute video, we're going to stop at this point and tell you that if it was a basic shape, we would be ready to stain and scrape and sand and stain. We're going to scrape it out we're going to stain it and all, but that's going to be after we hollow it. So, tell you what, join me again while we're making shavings, and I will show you how to hollow this using a gizmo. Really, a gizmo. Yeah, the gizmo hollow from JT Tools. It's coming up again when we're making shavings. Till then, take care.